All right, welcome back. I'm Steve Holland with Rapid Tech. And this is, uh, again, part of that heat exchanger failures and identification series that we run at our company, the Rapid Tech company, on that heat exchanger certification program that we have. This is the Carrier 58 PAV. It's an 80% efficient furnace. It's uh, PAV 90. It's listed as 90, but it's 88,000 BTUs. And I've got a shout out to uh, to Joe over in Wisconsin, who's a service tech. Joe likes to send me text messages and emails all the time, so I thought I'd mention him. And I tell you, he's a good student. He watches a lot of this type of material and tries to apply it out in the field. And then we've got Gary that works at Don Stevens. There's a little shout out to Gary, who I've worked with for almost uh, 20 years in the HVAC world. Let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, this video, and we'll get rolling here, and I'll show you what we found. All right, so this carrier model 58 PAV, uh, if you look over here, this is a side view of the entire heat exchanger. And what we illustrate here is just watch those dimples. Always check those dimples and then check those rivets. That's what the rivets look like. The rivets are probably the most difficult failure to find. You'll see, you'll see corrosion or you'll see tiny little fractures. All right. When you start to see larger fractures like this, that's a dimple. Here's another one. And then here's another one. So uh, essentially, the, the failures on this particular model are most likely going to be at those dimples or at those rivets. Now, I have seen them fracture along this curve. Remember, anytime you stress a piece of metal, rivet, dimple, you curve it, you press it, whatever, um, it could fail or eventually fail. Let's go ahead and watch the video and then... Uh, We'll talk about possible reasons that this particular furnace failed. But again, this is that 58 PAV. This furnace is also manufactured under the Bryant name and Payne name, and it just has a different model number, but essentially it's the same machine, uh, same heater. And there, of course, I show the, uh, I show the tag. Um, and I'm doing voiceover now. We were using the old method, which was a two-microphone audio system, where this video would have audio embedded in it as well, and it was just poor audio. And we're investing in more equipment all the time. And here I am in our, uh, that's our studio, where we film. Um, literally, we have live-fired equipment in that studio. We have oil furnaces and forced air. We actually are building right now a hydronic system. So we'll be able to do all of the technician development program. We've got a ventilator in there. Uh, dehumidifiers, ultraviolet germicidals, but let's go back to this heat exchanger. So, um, yeah, I know you're going to get dizzy because I do this by myself, one hand on the camera and one hand on the wheel. Um, so down here, if you look at the dimple, let me focus. That's another thing. i got to focus this little tiny camera. There you go. So there you see the fracture on that dimple, and that's just one, one cell. And remember, we ca call each one of those a cell, and there's the other side. And there's a cell that's fractured as well. Now, again, your odds of getting carbon monoxide off of this are slim to none, but that doesn't mean that you leave a furnace in operation like this. This is, this is a conversation with a homeowner. That's what it is, and then they have to take action. Replace the heat exchanger and or update the furnace. And I'm going to talk to you guys about that because um, there you see the fracture as well in another cell. So we had quite a few cells there with fractures in them. So... Um, you know, just watch that. You can see it right there. That's what you really want to pay attention to. And then watch those rivets and then any part of that heat exchanger that curves. You can see a rivet right there. It's a little corroded. A little corrosion on that one. So you want to watch that because I've seen little splits come off of those. There's a better picture of a rivet, and that one's not corroded. But I've actually seen the little splits come right off the side of them. We usually check each one. Yeah, I'm just going to show you a bunch of rivets. Not a real big deal. All right, so so you find a problem with a heat exchanger like this, or you a furnace. So you go out and you're doing your maintenance work, or you're out on a no heat call and you find this. I want to caution you, and I want to caution the salespeople out there watching this. If you were to change this heat exchanger, it's still available. You can buy this today. Now let's say you were to change it. You really need to identify and eliminate any of the possible causes. I see this so often in our industry where someone will go in and change a furnace or change a heat exchanger with the same duct system or with the same return air drop or with the same size filter. 
And you know this, most of you techs out there, and for those of you that are learning through our Rapid Tech program and some of you that are in the uh, development program, the number, the fastest way to destroy a furnace is to starve it of air. Matter of fact, if you go out to a website that I, I write a blog and uh, I've got on there, um, it's heatexchangersafety.com. And I've got all the destroyers of furnaces. If you want to learn how to destroy a furnace, just read that blog. It'll tell you exactly how to do it. But airflow, lack of airflow is the number one reason for heat exchanger failures. So what could have been the situation with this one? Well, let's go over it. One, we could have an undersized air filter. We do know that. And Joe, you know that, right? As a service tech, you see that all the time. Um, lack of maintenance. Um, customers, they're perfect about maintaining their equipment. Isn't that the truth? Now, and homeowners, by the way, if you're watching this, no offense to you, but we as technicians, when we get called out at 2.30 in the morning for a plugged air filter, we don't like that. Um, yeah, we have to charge you, and we'd love to have you as customers, but uh, we really want to educate the industry as well, not just our technicians, but our homeowners. Um, you know, maintenance is important, and having the system serviced. Years ago, you used to really do a lot more cleaning and maintenance because you pulled burners and brushed flues and did all this stuff. Today, it's a little different. Today, it's more safety checks, checking operation, checking pressures and temperatures and, and all that, and making sure that we're, we're dialed in. But there is still some cleaning. Um, with this particular furnace, we could have had some delta T issues, delta T uh, temperature rise issues, which again, falls back on airflow. And remember, high, uh, delta T problems or, or, or furnaces that are firing outside of that temperature rise range, that could be airflow, that could be gas pressure, too small filter, dirty filter. So it's not just uh, airflow when it comes to delta T, it could be other issues. And again, we could have high static duct pressure, we could be overfired, or we could have ducting issues. The one thing I don't have on there is that uh, oversized equipment. This furnace could have been oversized. So, you, you know, you want to make sure they're sized correctly. So that's the uh, Carrier 58 PAV. And uh, upcoming worthy news for Rapid Tech and for some of the programs that we offer is this year that heat exchanger guide. By the way, every single one of these furnaces that we archive, and we have hundreds of them, there's a manual that we have available that you get with the Rapid Tech program. And um, then we also sell that. And no, I don't make a bunch of money on it. And Somebody told me I need to start making money on it, but but whatever the case, I'll sell that and I'll sell it very reasonable. Um, it's just something I put together for the technicians at our company years ago, um, but now I've given dozens of them, probably, I don't know, over 100. I give them out to tech students at tech schools, and but we'll have a new one, so that's my point. We're going to have a new one coming out this year with a bunch of updates. And then the full rapid tech certification for heat exchangers, that's going to be launched real soon. A lot of the curriculums out there, but the full certification is going to be completed. And then we're going to move into all of our other certifications, air duct cleaning, aero seal, duct sealing, oil furnaces, boilers, forced air, uh, you know, air conditioning, gas heat. We'll have all those certifications. Remember, Rapid Tech is a nationally recognized certification program. We're not connected with any association. This is pri a private organization, and we do this strictly for the development of technicians. That's the whole goal. Um, we're not a training company. We are a technician development organization that helps businesses develop technicians rapidly to get them out into a truck to be productive. And then we have a very special recipe that I'm not going to disclose, but the way we, the, some of the things that we are doing, uh, we're just, it's, an, it's amazing how fast we're developing technicians through our program. And then business owners are saving about 70% of the cost of a traditional learning. Now, again, I'm not advocating against tech schools. Um, one thing we will not teach at Rapid Tech is we don't get into all the theory and all that other stuff. We're not getting into that. Um, some of it when we get into like, um, you know, on our air conditioning side with pressures and temperatures, but we're not going to compete with tech schools. They're our friends and we don't want to compete with them. So we encourage you guys to still go. This is a supplemental program that will assist in developing those technicians as they come out of school. And I will tell you, there's nothing like it in the country. I've been working on this since 2008. Started in 2008, but I tell people 2009 because that's when I really started to make something out of it. And uh, so we've been doing this a lot longer than anybody else with regard to having a proven method that works. So enough about that. If you want to talk to me, you can email me at ethoskill at gmail.com or contact Scott 
at our company at 866-992-1717. And then, of course, you're always welcome to visit heatexchangersafety.com. That's our blog. We post information out there. And that site will be getting a facelift this year. Um, we're going to put some money into that site and make that thing. Uh, um, I built it all by myself, and I've never built a website before. So, um, you know, it was my first try, and I did it over a weekend, and it's going to get much, much better because now I'm bringing in professionals. You know, like in the heating business, we always say bring the professionals in on the furnace, the ACs, and the boilers and all that. Well, guess what happens with websites? I'm bringing a professional in finally. All right, there you have it. Thank you, and I look forward to uh, getting you guys some more education and videos here in the next few weeks.